Hello everybody, I'm Moe OS, and this is Bat and Kaido's Origins once again. In the last episode, we went into the Cloud Vets, fought Valara, Hughes, and Nazca all at the same time, and Celsica turned into a monster and got blasted, and we got sent here, where we were dropped a very big hint about exactly where we are, and yet the game still plays a little bit coy about it. But, so, since I don't even understand why, when they go dropping that hint and then saying, I still don't know where we are, I'm just gonna spell it out for you. Every time one of those monsters dies, we get sent to the distant past. Anyway, we're off to see Wiseman, who's causing trouble in the past. And that's exactly what we're doing in this house here. Nice place you got here, all Go shadowy and on. weird. Who are you? I am Seth of Naus. What do you want with us? I must ask you something. Speak. They must consider the wishes of their people. He's just gonna wait for him to come down the stairs before he uh, goes saying what you need to say. Guess you are. You've turned Rosalis and any number of towns and villages and people into Magnus. Why are you doing it? Under your leadership, we learned to use our hearts. We've already reached a new level of prosperity. So why then? Because the flesh is inessential. People are only truly happy when they exist as Magnus, the essence of their beings. Are you happy with what you are? Have you no desire to be a better you, wiser, stronger, more beautiful? Just imagine what you could be if you used your hearts. I see you got a bunch of floaty things behind you. Nothing can you not picture yourselves stronger, superior to everyone. Those are just deluded fantasies. They're not who we really are. Fantasies? We suppose so. If imagining were the end of it. But what if you could live in your imagination? If you lived in the realm of desire... That your fantasies would become the only reality. Do you not find it charming? The idea of a world where impurities such as the flesh are removed and the heart alone can reside. By fostering our hearts, mankind has grown wings and learned great magics. Learn it, in fact, that all things have a true magna essence. It's time to take the next step. And what, pray tell, is this next step? Our people are obviously happy. Are we wrong? 
You think the people of Rosales were happy? You turned them into madness before they could even realize what was happening! And you think they were happy? They are happy. They might, may not understand how. But the day will come when they thank us. Resist if you want. But there is no point. This tide cannot be stemmed. We'll just see about that. And if I said we'll make you stop? Make us? Ha! Uh, wh what is this force? Good question. I can't move. You will see. The promagnation of man is inexorable. Is inexorable. Evolution will take its course. Oh no, he's shooting us. And there goes me head. Of course, couldn't just fight the dude. We gotta go back to present day. Hell of a time to interrupt us there. Yep. That's a basic recap of everything that went down in Diadem. Where are we? In cloud vents and diadem. We're back. What happened? What about Wiseman? Milliard, make the mental leap. We're back in diadem now. Where's Celsica? Dead. Uh, oh no! King Monocon and Gibari! What are you planning to do? That thing is too powerful. Well, we have to help. Yeah, we can't just let the king and Gibari get offed right now. We went through too much trouble to get King Latakon's help to let him just get shot in the face by this big vibrating tank. So... We'll take that bullet! And in the meantime, see if we can't do any damage to this thing. We can damn well try and only do one damage with each hit in the process. So... Yep. Okay, I didn't pay any attention. Oh, Millie got shot in the face. That's what happened. Knocked her flat on the ground. Okay, there's a weapon for Soggy that we can use. Maybe we'll do more than just one damage. I like doing more than just one damage. Hey, look at that! Four and five! We're doing numbers! Plasma cannon? Oof. Yeah, that was... That was not pleasant. Well... Millie's gonna eat some juice. Kilo's also gonna eat some juice. And Soggy is gonna discard some things in hopes of getting some cards we can actually use. And now he's gonna eat some juice. You gotta eat all of the juice or you won't grow up big and strong like John F. Kennedy. He's a big, strong man, or at least he was until, well, you know, the thing. You all know the thing. Anyway. Hope you... Okay, you survived. Long enough to get a potion in you. And that is good. So... I could use a... Medium attack here, but I don't think I'm gonna get it. There you go. And... Of course. Alright, now I'm getting some cards. How long until we just, uh, 
you know, decide that the battle ends with me getting blasted away because this thing is too powerful for me to do anything to. It should be too much longer. And, okay, just... We'll just keep on hitting until things happen. Yeah, you know it's gonna happen. You are fully aware of the situation here, knowing that this is a battle that we can't win just yet. Okay, go ahead and cancel out my putting in fucking cards for people. That's totally fair. I had good cards there, too, you fucking nutsack. Throw that juice at Gilo. Gilo needs it. Gilo needs to get some juiciness all up in that face. And great. Not having a lot of good cards I can use. There we go. Now I can do some hurt to ya. And Millie can eat some juice too. There you go. Just... Sooner or later, it's going to end. And you know well the way it will happen. This ain't the first Machina armor that we've gone up against. It's gotta end the same way that it did before, cause you know that's just how it be. And there's another bonk for ya. We still going? Yeah, we still going. Not sure how much longer this is gonna be going, though. But going it is! Okay, there we go. That's the end of it. Well. It ended. It's no good. I can't win. Soggy over here! What are you planning, Kingy boy? It better get us out of this situation alive, cause if it don't, then what are you even doing? Any day now. Great, keep it, keep it up. Hit that little punk with all you got. Oh, I see you're redirecting the wind to blow him back. Smart. What's going on? Wind. Everybody, retreat! Yeah, you can't drive your thing through winds that powerful. Wind can even lift that big chunk of steel when it's strong enough. Forgive me, Kid God. I should really... I should be rallying your knights. Not lying here in this wretched state. Pop! Hang on, Pop! Stop your clamoring. Are you a knight or not? But Pop! Uncle Ram, it's because of you that I'm standing here right now. Thank you. Such kind words are wasted on me. Any knight would be honored to act as his king's shield. I'm sorry. I'll try harder, Uncle Ram. I'll learn to be as strong as you. Pop! Pop! Don't cry, Gibari. Diadem's clouds grow dark when it's night sh when it's night's shed tears. And dark clouds are harbingers of great wars. There's a saying. Pop! Don't die! Pop! You know he's gonna die. Telling him not to ain't gonna stop it. Gibari, it's your turn to be your king's shield. Heed me. Myths right until the end. Damn you! Pop! Damn you! Arg! Really could have done a better scream there, but I don't feel like doing it. I ain't that great of an actor, and I'm not gonna delude myself into thinking that I am. God, I, um... 
you want to please? I know. You don't have to say it. Then let's hurry and assemble the knights. We have to avenge Selsica and Pop. It's all right. Huh? What do you mean, all right? The knights will be assembled to take back the cloud men, and Selsica and Uncle Ram will be avenged. I promise you that. But Gib, I don't need you to do it. What are you talking about, Khan? I don't have to give you a reason. I order you as your king, Gibari. Give up your knighthood and return to Nashira. Khan! I'm speaking to you as your king. This is an order, Gibari. What the hell? I don't understand, Khan! Oh, you'll understand in due time. There is a point in the first game where Callus asks Gibari why he stopped being a knight in the first place. And Gibari says, ah, that's a story for another day. And this is the day for that story. As you wish, sire. If that is, if that is his majesty's bidding... You can go. Take care of Nashira. Sagi. Sagi. Thanks. Look after things in my place, okay? Gibari. Gibari. Well, see you later, young Gibari. God! Friends forever! <laughs> and there he goes. So, guess I have your support then, Kingy Boy! Damn, my nose is stuffy right now. Diadem will join the fight against Baelheit. Pass that message to Quaestor Varys. Yes, Your Majesty. I'll be sure to tell him. Thank you. About Gibari, though. Are you sure you want to leave things that way with Gibari? I can't lose Gib. If my life were put at risk again, I know he would do the same thing as Uncle Ram, but Gib's too special to me. I can't bear to lose him. Heh, <laughs> I guess I'm a poor king saying things like that. If Uncle Ram were alive, he'd tell me off royally, so to speak. Of course not. Nobody wants to lose the ones they care about. He'd understand. You're very kind. King Ladakon, we should probably be going soon. Once I get to back to once I get back to Alfard, I'll work with the Quaestor on our strategy going forward. I see. And I'll be praying for your success. Alright. But we can't go back to Alfard yet. We actually have to go back into the cloud vents one more time. Because when we try to leave, there's a guy outside the castle who wants us to go back into the cloud vents to grab Selsica's royal crest. Which happens to be in the place that she fell. And if we say, okay, we'll just put that off until later then we, when we try to leave the sh the fucking pilot of the ship says oh no we can't do that until you go and we can't leave until you go and do the thing that guy wanted you to do so here we go again going back through here to get a thingamabobber there's also a chest in that room where we fought Nazca fucking lobster also, there's a chest in that room that I want to get, but that's just besides the point. Anyway, time to kill some lobsters. 
There we go, no more lobster. And now this part. There's a big long gust of wind. A short break and then another quick gust of wind. Okay, that was my chance to go. So, yeah, I guess I had the timing mixed up there. So this is the big long gust of wind. And then comes another quick... Damn it, I stepped a little too far forward. Stop your blowing! Stop your blowing right now! I'm getting this chest. Eleven snakes rise. I already got that, goddamn you! Well, let's just push through this wind here. Come back up here and wait for an opening and... Yep, there we go. That is the opening I needed. Let's go! Bitch! They better not have reopened that hole that I plugged. Okay, it's still plugged. Good! I don't want no pluggy hole getting unplugged. I plugged that bitch for a reason! And this shining on the ground right here. That's a blood-soaked royal crunt S belonged to Celsica. And we'll go ahead and grab that because we absolutely need it. Bring it back to the castle. Oh, we will. And there's this chest with a thunder hat in it. And if we wanted to, we could walk up and try to fight Nazca again, but that ain't gonna go so well. We won't be strong enough to bust up a Machina armor for a little while longer. We gotta go through a major story beat that comes along later before we can do that. We'll rem after we know exactly why we go get sent into the distant past every time one of those <laughs> umbras, as they've been called, get killed. And we'll also understand why Gilo gets the feeling that they were made specifically for killing them. Those two things will come to light before we can actually face off against a Machina Arma and live. Well, I mean, we've already faced two of them and lived already, but... But we're strong enough to actually kill them. That will come later. Much later. But not too much later. So, okay. What happening now? It's me. What's the situation there? King Ladakhan has agreed to help us, but unfortunately we couldn't halt Promachination here. We were able to stop the Umbra that appeared. But we weren't able to stop the Umbra that appeared here either, sir. It was taken down by a Machina armor like before. An Afterling? So there was one in Diadem. Afterling? Nothing. Never mind. I'm just rambling. Good work on your mission. I'll hear the details upon your return. Understood. Well then. Varys Dunn went throughout the word afterling. Another word that we've heard that describes those beasts. And he'll give us a... a a deeper explanation of that once we get back to Alfard. But this guy standing here at the bridge. You, you're soggy, right? Please, just a moment. And... okay. I need to ask you something. You... you were there when Celsica died, were you not? Did she... at the very end... was she suffering? What should we say to him, Schwumbus? Uh, I'm not sure exactly. She turned into a monster, but was blasted to... to a fucking corpse pretty quickly. I don't imagine she felt much pain. So I assume she died peacefully. Celsica died in peace. 
Really? Really? Oh, that's such a relief. I'm glad she wasn't in pain. Though part of that kind of feels like a lie. I'm sorry for suddenly springing a question like that on you. I knew Celsica since boyhood. She was always desperately trying to change. She never once spoke about her life before she came to live here, so even I don't know the specifics. There was something about her, though. It was as if she cursed the life she was born into. Whenever the other kids teased her about being an orphan, she would just cry, bitter and angry. She had that same look in her eyes the day she said she would become a knight. What I wanted was to become her family, but I never found the words to tell her. Ah, forgive me. Actually, I stopped you because I had a favor to ask. What's that? Do you think you can help me find the royal crest of diadem she always carried? Yep, there it is. A mandatory side quest. She never parted with it, not once since the day she joined the knights. I'm sure it's still lying where she fell. I understand. I'll pr I promise I'll bring Celsica's crest here to you. I hear that Imperial troops are still holding up, holding the cloud vents. Please be careful. Thank you. Anyway, I got that quest already because I knew this was going to happen. So take the damn thing. Kept the crest. And there you go. Take that bloody ass crest. And bam, there goes my nose again, plugging itself up like it owns the place. Is this... This is Celsica's blood, so much. Enough to stain her crest crimson. Uh, yep. Thank you, Soggy. We will never forget what happened. No one among us will ever forget Celsica or Rambari. I'm not sure what to offer you in return. Please take these, I was holding them for Celsica. Another Magnus Vixer. And a Sword of Tears, which I've already got. I feel as if your journey will determine all our fates. I'll be watching over you from here. I hope I'll see you again, Soggy. Yeah, we'll just see about that. Anyway, time to move! So yeah, that Magnus Mixer we got is the next gen Magnus Mixer, which mixes things a bit faster than the older model that we had. And real quick, see if I can get even classier, and then we'll pop over to Sedna, because I know we got a couple of Sedna Magnus that I didn't use. Lacking experience! Well, you're lacking in my ass, mister! Anyway, Sedna to the town of Sedna. Got some more things to drop off here. And... I got a set in a peach tree. Yep, throw it on down somewhere. And... Boing! There it is. It's a tree. With pink peachy fruit. Thank you so much, Suggy. Keep up the good work. Yep. A little more life has returned to the town of Sedna. Though it ain't quite enough to actually earn us a reward yet. Anywho, time to go. Rambari and my beloved Celsica. Yeah, he were a big fan. It will be hard for this kingdom from here on with two of its most important people gone. Lord Baleheit's actions continue to get more and more extreme. Are you ready to head out? Yep, let's go. Yeah, time to start flying. Hurry it up, asshole! We gotta go! And you best not be too slow or I'll have to kick you in the nuts! So, no, we're not going to Hasselay. We're going to Alphard. Hey, there's the church over there, up in the corner, where Mira happens to be in the first game. So, yeah, we can 
only go to the, hey, there's the Coliseum, too. We could go to the Coliseum, to the church, to Alfard, and Hasile, and Diadem. Those are our only options. Those two other continents and that place down there at the bottom, not yet. So off to Alfard. We've got two other islands to do before we get to the point that we're able to actually bring down a Machina Arma. And that is going to take a while, and you know there's going to be more of these afterlings or umbras or whatever you want to call them on each of them islands, so we got at the very least two more trips to the past before that shit happens, before everything is revealed to us. Though I do like having the freedom to pick which island I go to rather than have to play through like 60% of the game before I can finally freely travel to whichever island I damn well please. Of course we can't exactly go to whichever island we damn well want to right now. We've got islands available to us. But the point is you're free to choose your destination. Even if those options are limited first game it took a real long time before you could actually choose which island to head to but I'm just rambling now like Varys claimed that he was when he dropped the word afterling now let's go talk to the old man and see what knowledge he has to drop about afterlings. It's coming and you know it. So then they're still in the early stages of pro-machination. Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. King Lodakan and his knights are taking steps to prevent it from reaching completion. Quaster... Bailhide is moving much quicker than we thought. This time he took over Nashira and the Cloud Vents at the same time. You're quite right. The enemy is moving extremely fast. Quaster, there's been word that he's already sent soldiers to Sadal Sud as well. Sadal Sud? Guild of Lame? What do you think of that? It's a danger, sir. The Lord of Sadal Sud is always is a, is away, and an Erevis, Erevist named Rodolfo is after his title. Rodolfo is the sort you could easily wrap around your little finger were the deal sweet enough. <laughs> My guardian spirit seems to share that opinion. She's warning me not to leave Rodolfo to his own devices. Soggy, what does your spirit say? Well, I say he could be trouble. Because, well, he's kind of important in some way, shape, or form. Schwabus feels the same way, sir. I see. Then you should, then you would better head for Zadal Sud. Make contact with this Rodolfo and intervene if he seems likely to go along with pro machination. Understood. I'm counting on you. Yeah. But Sagi has some questions. What's wrong? You look like you have something to say. Go on. Let's hear it. Quaster, you know something about the Umbras, don't you? Shanath and Valara call them afterlings, and there is something about Malpertio. Where did you hear this? They were talking about it, and Quaster, you said afterling yourself. You mean when I called you a diadem? Me and my loose tongue. So, you do know something about them? Alright, I'll tell you. I suppose I shouldn't have waited this long. And now, here comes the long-winded explanation about them. 
Do you know the story of the ancient war of the gods? I know it, and if you've played the first game or seen somebody play it, then you know it too. You do, Schwumpus? All I know is that it's some kind of legend. It's not a legend. The War of the Gods really happened. It's true, I learned about it in the School of Magic nearly a thousand years ago, and there was a war amongst the gods. A current record of the war still exists. That's right. The children of the Earth who live in Dur recorded what happened. It began a thousand years ago, when the wicked god Malpertio rebelled against the other gods. He called forth a host of dark brethren, intending to remake the world as he saw fit. Soon the other gods were annihilated, the earth withered, and the world fell into darkness. The world would have been destroyed had no one intervened, but the children of the earth's ancestors stepped in. They defeated the wicked god and sealed away his power. Incidentally, have you ever wondered why the world's continents float in the sky? I know why, and we're getting that explanation. It was also kind of pointed out in the first game near the end. But yeah, never thought about it. That's the only thing that I can say that isn't an asshole response. I've always assumed that's the way it's supposed to be. Me too. A god's power keeps them aloft. Namely, the End Magnus in which Malpertio was sealed. End Magnus? Yep, those don't play such a big role in this game like they did in the last one though. The children of the Earth's ancestors divided the wicked gods' remains into five End Magnus and sealed one in each continent. Then they severed the continents from the tainted Earth and used Malpertio's power to set them aloft. What does this have to do with those monsters we saw? He's getting to that! Only part of Malpertio's body was sealed in the end Magnus. What do you think became of the rest? Well, it doesn't just disappear, so it was discarded. Was it discarded? Yes, it was. That's right. After the wicked god was torn asunder, those pieces possessing the most power were sealed in the end Magnus, and the rest were scattered throughout the world so that the fiend could not revive. The Umbras you've seen are the discarded pieces of Malpertio. What? To be exact, they're living beings, with the pieces growing inside. You see, the pieces have no real power until they live inside another creature. So then, Bine and Celsica were both carriers of Malpertio's remains? Correct. The pieces alone could never have revived, but by latching onto a host, their thousand-year yearning for life was fulfilled. When the pieces awaken is determined by the carrier's emotional state, feelings of loss, of sadness, negative emotions cause the wicked god to surface. Isn't there any way to save the carriers? I doubt it. If the carriers knew who they were, things would be different. But they don't. Not until they've already turned into monsters. That's all I can tell you. Are you satisfied? Yeah. Then, back to the task at hand. There's not much, but I've prepared some new Magnus. Take them. Battle suit, sister's habit, and Mephistopheles cloak. That is some armor for everybody, I believe. 
And I, it would probably do me some good to have them in my deck. So, might as well just dump some of the other stuff that I'm carrying around that I don't really need anymore. Like this, and that. So, we'll... Yep. There we go, fucking things do not doing what I want it to do. But there we go. Some nice armor for everybody. And now we're off to Sadal's Sud to prevent further pro-machination from happening. But of course things ain't gonna go exactly as planned now, are they? You know there's gonna be another afterleg and potentially another Machina Arma to deal with. But... We'll just have to see when we get there. And... We are gonna get there. We still got plenty of time before I can call this episode. That would have been a perfect place to end it, but... Fuck it, I got time, and I ain't into wasting time. Except sometimes I like wasting time. Depends on my mood, and now is not the mood. Yeah, we're heading out. Take us to Sadal soon, boy! And be quick about it. The slower you go, the more time I have to kick you in the nuts. I like kicking my pilot in the nuts. He has some very kickable nuts. So let's go, you slow-ass piece of shit. And there's Sadal Sud. That's where we's going. Gotta stop Rodolfo from selling out to the Promachimation. Faircad, the ancient capital. This is the very first island from the first game. And after some trouble with the Empire, you head off to Diadem, and then from there you go to Anue Nue, and then to Mira. But things go in a different order this time round. Isn't Faircad supposed to be the biggest city in Sadal Sud? What does that say about Sadal Sud? There's nothing here! That's okay. I like the peace and quiet. It reminds me of Hasele. Miliard, I thought Sadal Sud was part of the Empire. It's not. Why? I'm spying an awful lot of Imperial soldiers. Hey, you're right. Now what are they doing here? But now that you mention it, didn't Gelblame say as much? He told us that Balehide already deployed soldiers to a Sadal Sud. He's always one step ahead. What should we do, Schwumbus? Let's look for Rodolfo. As much as I'd like to kill the soldiers, doing so in broad daylight in front of all the villagers ain't such a good idea. Yeah, good idea. The whole reason we're here is to meet with this Rodolfo person. Well, let's go find Rodolfo then and see what he has to say. Yeah. We'll see what he has to say. Assuming it is actually findable. Anyway, I guess these people ain't letting us into the shop. We seem to be attracting an awful lot of attention. Yeah, I get the feeling we ought to keep our distance. Yeah, now why is that? Is it just me or is it a little stifling here? Let's pull back for now. Yeah, why is that? Hey, Soggy, look at that! Look at what? Wanted. Gilo, the masked man-eater, puppet of destruction, snatches babies and raises entire cities. 
Report any sightings to the nearest Imperial soldier. What? Yeah. What, indeed. Ha <laughs> ha ha. Masked man-eater, huh? Gilo, you're a wanted criminal. What sort of decree is this? First of all, I do not have a beak. It looks like the Empire just made stuff up. Look on the bright side. With a portrait like that, nobody will recognize you right away. Hey, what do you say we take this down and bring it along with us? Billiard, you rotten wench. Yeah, I guess we're taking it. No sense in leaving it up. Yeah, let's take it with us. Soggy? Schwumpus, not you two! It's not like that. We may have some use for it later. And would you rather we just leave it up here like this for everyone to see? I don't care. Do what you want! Yeah, we're taking the poster. We have to take the posters with us. Got Gilo's poorly drawn one in close poster. I always loved the poorly drawn one in poster gag. They did it in Tales of Symphonia. They're doing it here. Oh, hey, Soggy. There's this place I need to stop by while I'm here. What? Right now? Yeah, sorry. I'll catch up. Go on ahead without me. Will do. Alright, then. I can see another one of those posters, but... We'll worry about that later. We can't take it with us just yet anyway. We need to have Millie back with us in order to do that. Gila won't allow us to do that. There she is. I'm back. Sorry, Soggy. Yep. Good. You better be sorry. It's okay. Are y'all set? Yeah, we can go. All right, then. And there's another poster right here. I'm telling you, if I see them criminals, I'm gonna beat them down and turn them in. Huh, they're supposed to be pretty vicious. You sure you can take them on by yourself? As it happens, I used to be the Sevilrai arm wrestling champ in my youth. You just leave it to me and these fists of iron. POW! Well, I'm not about to let those ruffians run free in my city either. They'll take my staff and just whack! Whack! Get it? Yeah, whack. Nothing to see here, just a boy in red. Whew, that was close. Those posters are breeding rumors. Until those people move on or attract or move on to another topic, it'll be tough to pass by. Right, if we take down those posters, things might quiet down a bit. Let's give it a try, guys. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do, but I stumbled a little bit too close to the crowd. Wanted Soggy the Wedding Con. Spiriter who will spirit away your life savings. Watch out, ladies. Report any sightings, blah blah blah. Soggy, this talks about this talk about marriage fraud. It's made up, of course. Come on, have a little faith. I don't know, Soggy, something about you just cries out to be mothered. I'm sure you'd be a big hit with rich older madame types looking to get married. He's still just a soft little kid in some ways. Oh dear, I think we hurt his feelings. Take the poster down. And we could also cheer Soggy up, but we'll take the poster down. You're right, let's tear this stupid poster down. Ain't no sense in telling you to cheer up when there's something to be bummed out about, this stupid ass wanted poster. Hey, Schwumbus, do you think I'm still soft too? Not at all. You've grown into a fine young man. Thanks, yeah. You feel better now. I've reassured you of your masculinity. Now let's go take down that last one in poster, and all this shit will blow over. And here we go, wanted. Billy, the Klepto Maiden, known to nab everything from eyeliner to skyliners. Beware. Report sightings, yeah. 
Hey, wait just a minute here. What is the, what's the deal with this poster? First off, this face. What are they, blind? I'd say they have a keen eye for detail. Quiet, can opener! Soggy, you have to take this horrible, libelous poster down at once! Right. Take it down, then throw it out. Immediately, are we clear? Schwumpus, do you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. We'll take it. And throw it away at some point, because carrying it around has absolutely no benefit at all. You better throw that away. Pronto! You hear me, Soggy? Schwumpus! Yeah, I'll throw it away. Just as soon as I'm sure that it's not needed to upgrade any of my equipment at the shop. Which we can now get into, because we took that wanted posters and gave people some time to stop thinking about us. Looks like the two old folks we were talking that were talking hadn't decided to move on. They must have tired of gossip. Now we ought to be able to walk around a bit more freely. Oh, you're right about that. So we're going to stop by the shop real quick. See if they have anything good worth buying. Any upgrading that we could possibly do. God damn it's another scary ass shopkeeper. And I got mail. So let's see. Unopened letters. It's Anna. Oh yeah, from the pub and diadem. That's who that is. Dear Soggy, how are you? We finally started fishing again here in Ashira. The dumb empire made us miss the peak season, but otherwise things are finally back to normal. We're still repairing the big hole Gibari made in the wall. I think that Lunk has already forgotten about the hole and the secret passage. Oh, guess what? I learned how to properly fillet a glubber fish. I'll grill you up some next time your time's to drop by soon. I guess Gibari can have some too, if there are leftovers. Anna. P.S. Actually, Gibari's been kind of down. He just mumbles to this gray thorn all day. It's not like him. Next time you visit, could you try to cheer him up a little? Probably not! I ain't gonna go back to Diadem for a while. Another letter from Giacomo, of all people. Curses! A second loss to the likes of you. There must have been some mistake. The next time we meet, I wi will be the last time. Enjoy the rest of your life. Well, okay then. That's a nice letter to get. Diadem, get back in the kingdom. Enjoy four days of vacation fun in Diadem with your own expert guide. Arrive in the fishing village of the Shira by private liner and lunch on Glubberfish fresh off the hook. Stroll through the cloud passage, a fluffy, dreamy landscape loved by all. Take a commemorative photo of the famous changing of the guard in the castle town of Sheliac. For more information, contact Di Diadem Travel Bureau. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be doing that. From the Master of Mischief, that's fucking Palolo. Dear Soggy, normally I just show up in a whirlwind, but I thought a letter might make for a fun change of pace. Anyway, thanks for the help of Diadem, a mischief pro such as myself is always up for a chance to do some damage. Speaking of which, I think it's time to relocate. The Master of Mischief has to be everywhere and nowhere, always ready to help fo out folks the world round. Anyway, see you when I see ya. Below the second, Master of Mischief. Good for you, broadening your horizons. Gibari, this is the last letter we get. Yo, Soggy, how you doing? A lot's happened, everything feels a little mixed up, but I'm not sick or nothing, don't worry. I feel kind of weird asking you this, but is Khan okay? If you're ever back at LNAF, check up on him for me, will ya? How do all these people get my address? Anyway... Upgrading. I don't have the necessary materials to do any upgrading, unfortunately. That just needs some fucking pristine water. That's pretty easy to find. But I don't fucking have any. What is this? Dark powder? Not sure where I'd get dark powder. And, well, that's a yester bean. I know where to find those. I just haven't. I just haven't been going there. It's not a place I would usually go to. But fucking whatever. What are you selling? Uh, a glacial bludgeon? Yeah, that'll be good. Ray of Truth? I don't got enough gold for that. Damn, this shit's expensive. 
They got some expensive tastes here in Sidalsud. Anyway, let's go see about popping into the Lord's Manor. That is where we are most likely to find Rodolfo. He did, he has taken up fucking political stuff. Oh wait, there's a wanted poster right there next to the bar. I couldn't reach that one before because I couldn't get past the people there. Kind of forgot about that one being there. So we'll take that one. Who's this one? It's Gilo again. Yep. It really is impressive how wild this description is. There's no way anything as savage as all that could really be roaming through the streets. You think so? The way Gilo lights up and goes on those rampages, I'd say it's pretty close. Especially the bit about the masked man-eater. Soggy, I feel like I could do more damage than a Machina armor right now. Would you mind if I reduced the soldiers, the wench, and this whole blasted city to a pile of ashes? Yes, I would mind a lot. Put the weapon away, Gilo. You weren't kidding, were you? Let's take it down. Get it down before Gilo goes fucking nuts. Save the aggression for actual enemies. You'll get plenty of chance to blow that steam off, Gilo. Plenty! Oh, chance! In the next episode, because I'm all out of time for this one, so thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching me see you in the next one. Goodbye!